Hi, my name's Jen, and I'm a writer and a storyteller. I work for a charity called Read for Good, uh, and we work in schools and hospitals all across the UK. Uh, we raise money by uh, getting kids in schools to do sponsored reads. They can read whatever they like. They can read books, they can read Xbox instructions, they can even read cereal packets. Uh, but the money raised by those children is used by Read for Good to uh, buy brand new books for our 30 hospitals across the UK. Each hospital gets 120 brand new books every half term that sit on a lovely bookcase on wheels. And they also get a visit from a storyteller like me. There are 10 of us spread across the UK and we go in and we visit with the kids and we tell stories and we collect stories and we have a really, really lovely time and hopefully lift some spirits of uh, people in hospital. Uh, so today I'm going to tell you a story. Now this story is based on uh, a folk story from Korea, but I've made a few changes as all the best storytellers do. Um, and I hope nobody gets offended. It has got some farting in it. This is how it starts. Once upon a time, there was a young woman. She was the smartest and the kindest young woman you'd ever known. And she lived at home with her mum. Now this girl had a bit of a problem. Every now and then, her stomach would start to rumble and grumble. And the rumbling and the grumbling would grow and grow and grow until she would let out the biggest farts you've ever, ever heard. I mean, I can't even tell you how big they are. But here's an example. One day, she was at home with her mother and they were making jam. And I don't know if you've ever made jam, but you have to keep stirring in case it sticks to the pot. But the girl was stirring and then the stomach started to rumble and grumble. And she started to make a bit of a face like this. And her mum said, what's the matter? And she said, oh, mum, I think I need to go outside. It's just, I think I'm going to fart. And her mother said, oh, don't worry, dear. I've farted about 20 times while we've been making this jam. You can't stop stirring, just fart in here. And the girl said, oh, all right, mum, but hold on to that chair. So her mum held on to the chair and the girl held on to the pot and the stomach grumbled and rumbled until <gasps> the most ginormous fart and the roof blew off the cottage and the girl flew up in the air and her mother flew up in the air and the pot of jam flew up in the air and they landed with a thud, thud, splash right in the cabbage patch outside. The girl looked up at the house and she could see a huge hole in the roof. She looked at her mother and she could see the jam pouring down her face and she was mortified. She was so embarrassed. She said to her mother, that's it. I'm going to have to leave. I've got to leave. I'm going to pack my stuff now and I'm going to go. I can't damage your house anymore. And her mother begged and pleaded with her to stay, but the girl had made up her mind. So that night she packed her bag and set off on an adventure to find somewhere where she could be without causing too much trouble. She traveled all across the kingdom. And one day she found herself walking through a city walking past a wall and on the other side of the wall was a pear orchard full of trees that were full of beautiful pears. And in the middle of the orchard stood a little man in red with his hands on his hips like this and a very cross look on his face. Now, as I said, this girl was the kindest and the smartest and she looked over the wall and said, excuse me, you okay? And the man turned around and he said, well, these pears are meant to be in these boxes and on that boat in the harbour because we've sold them to the kingdom over the sea. But I can't reach the pears. All the ladders are broken and the pears won't come down. Just then, the girl's tummy started to rumble a little and she had an idea. She said, I might be able to help. Hold on to that tree. So the little man in red gripped hold of the tree and the young lady rubbed her tummy a bit and the rumbling and the grumbling grew and she turned around and she pointed her bum at the orchard and <clears throat> she let out this massive fart and the wind from the fart knocked all the pears off the tree, uh, trees and they landed with a thud, 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 thud. 
the little man in red jumped for joy. And he blew a little whistle and out of the big house came running all of these servants who picked up all the pears, popped them into the boxes and ran off down to the harbour with them. Now, it turns out that this wasn't just any big house. This was actually a palace. And this palace housed a queen. Now, when the queen heard about what the young woman had done, she was delighted and she sent the little man in red to chase the young woman who was heading off on her adventures. The little man in red <laughs> finally caught up with the girl. Excuse me, miss. It's just the queen. The queen's invited you to a banquet tonight to say thank you. The girl didn't know what to say. She'd never been to a banquet before. She looked at her clothes. She didn't feel like she was dressed right. She said, oh, I, I don't think I can. And the little man in red said, well, you can't say no to the queen, sorry. So that night, the young woman found herself at the longest banquet table you've ever seen, filled with every kind of delicious food you can imagine, and saw the queen at the end of the table giving an amazing speech, thanking the young woman for everything she'd done and saving the kingdom that day. But just as the queen was about to call for three cheers, the little man in red ran up to the queen and whispered, queen's face fell. Oh no, she said, and the room fell silent. Now, our young lady, of course, is the kindest and the smartest, and so she just stood up and said, Your Majesty, is there something wrong? Can I help? And the queen said, Oh my goodness, my dear, you did such a favour for us and we got all of those pears off the trees and into the boxes and down to the harbour and onto the boat. But now the boat won't move because there's no wind. And again, the girl had an idea. And luckily, she'd eaten so much food at the banquet that indeed her stomach was starting to rumble and grumble. And so she said, quick, follow me. And the girl ran down to the harbour and she was followed by all the ladies and the lords and the little man in red and the queen. And they got to the harbour and the girl said, hold on to something. And people held on to anything they could see, the wall, a lamppost, the dog, each other. And the girl rubbed her tummy and the rumbling and the grumbling grew and grew and she turned her bum towards the sails of the ship and... She let out a huge fart and the wind filled up the sails of the ship and off it sailed into the sunset. Everybody jumped for joy. The queen, the little man in red, all the ladies and the lords, and they picked the young woman up on their shoulders and walked her back to the palace, cheering and singing. Now the queen took the young lady aside and said, you have saved the kingdom not once but twice today. You have to come and be my advisor and live with me here in the palace. And the young lady, well, she'd never imagined her life would turn, to, turn out like this. But she said, oh, your majesty, I would love to, but you see, it's difficult. I, I, can, I can fart when I choose, but sometimes it happens when I don't want to and it can cause a lot of damage. I couldn't live in the palace. I would be terrified of causing any kind of problems. And the queen, who was also pretty kind and pretty smart, had a think. And she said, OK, what if I ask my best architects and my best builders and my best stonemasons to build you a stone cottage that is stronger than anything you know so that you can live inside it and never worry that you're going to cause any damage. And the young lady couldn't believe it. She said, your majesty, would you do that for me? And the queen said, you saved our kingdom today. I would do anything. And the young lady said, well, in that case, your majesty, I would be honored to come and live here. There's just one more thing. And the queen said, anything. She said, can I go and get my mum? Queen said, you must. And so the young lady found herself in a beautiful gold carriage riding across the kingdom. 
until she came to her mother's cottage and she found her mother there up a ladder still trying to fix the roof after the big jam explosion. When the girl told her mother everything that had happened, her mother was so proud of her daughter and so astounded by what had happened. And of course, she said, yes, let's go and live in the palace. And so the young woman and her mother rode back to the palace and they lived in a perfect stone cottage for years and years and years. And the young woman became the queen's most trusted advisor. And sometimes she used her farts, but she was kind and smart. So sometimes she used her generosity and her brain to solve all the problems of the kingdom. And they all lived happily ever after.